Hadouken! Oh, I'm a ticket too. Ooh, I'm blazed. What's good, people? How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, please do subscribe down below. Smash the like, hit the bell. Those things help out a lot. YouTube does notify people when we upload, so just make sure you hit that bell. Anyway, guys, today we got a dope episode for you because it's all about knowing when your crop is beyond saving from pests and disease. At this point, you probably just want to trash it. Yep, I said that. You probably just want to trash it, cut that shit down, throw it away, get rid of it, burn it with fire, whatever Bruh. you want to do. Just get rid of it and get it out of the grow room. Whether it be spider mites, powdery mildew, or bud rot, it can be tough knowing when your plants need to be saved and when they need to be trashed. So in this video, what I'm gonna try to help you do is to uncover some of the telltale signs and indicators that will let you know when your crop is simply beyond any help at all. As we all know, when it comes to dealing with bugs and pathogens, it often takes years of experience to effectively diagnose and treat those issues. Many beginner growers don't have the confidence it takes to destroy a crop when it reaches a certain disease threshold. I've literally seen people with plants that have infestations and they're just holding on to them. I'm like, but why dude? Why? And you got other plants as well. Those are going to infest those plants as well. Like, but some people just don't have the heart to chop it down and start all over. Cut your losses and let's get reset. Becoming a good home gardener is all about trial and error. Even the most skilled growers have to fail a few times before they succeed. I'm by no means an expert and I'm still learning myself. I got a lot of times where I just had to cut down, cut my losses and reset. While it's always tough to deal with those disease crops that require you to destroy your plants, you should take those opportunities to become a better grower. After all, that's what it's all about, right? Improving your growth. So in today's episode, I'm going to break down all that for you guys. But before we get into that, guys, just a reminder, if you ain't supporting on Patreon, definitely join up, fam. We got a bunch of VIPs on there who get free packs and other free stuff. And right now, I'm just waiting on some new exclusives to touch down so you can get those in your go boxes, man. So if you ain't signed up, definitely sign up so you can get some of those exclusives. And guys, Diesel Dog Clothing is just around the corner, man. Everything 420, 420 stoners is for us, man. So definitely look out for that. Some of the most premium 420 brand clothing you definitely will find around. And support us. Support us, cop some stuff, and just support us and support the fam, man. But without further ado, let's get into today's episode. <laughs> Yes, guys. Now, first off, you gotta diagnose the issue. The first step in actually understanding when your plants are too diseased to save is diagnosing the problem. All things considered, before you can make any important decisions about whether or not to keep your crop, you first need to understand what exactly is even wrong in the first place. While certain diseases and deficiencies are pretty easy to diagnose, others are more challenging. The best way to set yourself up for success in the future is to research the common molds, mildews, bugs, imbalances, and those sort of stuff that can affect your plants. Once you know the type of disease you're dealing with, then you'll be able to find the information needed to aid your decision on whether to save or destroy the crop. And we go through a lot of stuff on this channel, so definitely subscribe when you pick some of that knowledge up and you'll know without even having to research it. But what I'm going to do is go through some of the most common situations where you definitely should consider thrashing those plants and just burning it with a fire and getting it out of the grow room ASAP. Now first off, let's talk spider mites. What exactly is the threshold of spider mites? Spider mites are one of the most common bugs causing problems for all plant lovers. Whether you're growing indoors, outdoors, these pesky little insects will always seem to find a way into your garden. Oftentimes, spider mites will show themselves as little white dots on the tops or the sides of leaves. When you find that discoloration, turn the leaf upside down. A lot of times, I tell people, look under the leaves, and you will probably discover some little spider mites inhabiting the undersides of those leaves. Now, because spider mites are so small, they often just look like dark pieces of dirt until you touch them and they start moving around or you just realize like damn did that piece of dirt just walk off the leaf like wait what a good indicator that a plant is not salvageable from a spider mite infestations are webs spun around the branches and flowers a lot of you people would have seen these nightmare pictures for a spider mite infestation to have progressed this far they have had to have gone unchecked for a significant amount of time like you have been really lapsing if you let that happen man and trust me guys if you see a bunch of webs spun around your plants then you're probably at that stage where that spider mite population is impossible to fight without actually destroying your plants. So keep an eye out for those spider mites guys. Next up is powdery mildew. Powdery mildew is a pervasive pathogen and it can destroy a crop especially if you leave it unchecked. The primary cause for powdery mildew is overly humid conditions and poor airflow in the garden. You want to have that circulation, airflow, super important. When you got those imbalances in your environment, 
powdery mildew has a chance to establish itself on your plants and it spreads super quick. Powdery mildew is easy to identify. It pretty much looks like white fuzzy spots from the leaves, the stems, the flowers, pretty much anywhere on your plant. And what's worse, while bugs like spider mites leave small indentations on the leaves, powdery mildew actually protrudes off the leaf surface. Now lots of times the ability to actually deal with powdery mildew effectively is largely tied to the growth phase of your plant. So are you in veg? Are you in flower? Are you in an early phase of flower? Are you in a late phase of flower, if you discover powdery mildew during the veg stage, you can likely get the problem under control with some organic fungicides. But if you have a powdery mildew outbreak during the flowering stage and the pathogen infiltrates the insides of the buds, you gotta just destroy that crop, man. I know it's painful, but you gotta do it. As long as the powdery mildew does not make its way inside of the flowers, you can probably salvage your plants from this super common disease. Now, another one to look out for, guys, is bud rot. This is definitely one where if you find it, depending on where you find it, you may want to just get rid of your entire crop just cut your plant down throw it outside don't even throw it in your compost bin i'm talking about just get rid of it throw it in the trash now the scientific name for bud rot is actually botrytis and it's a common mold but due to the rapid speed that bud rot can spread through a garden it's one of the most dreaded pathogens for all gardeners and commercial producers alike. Just like PM, bud rot can come out of nowhere, especially when those overly humid conditions persist in your garden. A lot of times you can identify the bud rot with yellowing sugar leaves that protrude from the insides of the flowers. So those leaves, that, those sugar leaves that come out of the flowers, they actually start to turn a little bit yellow. And if you examine the problem a little bit further in, you will definitely see some of that bud rot in there. Because with bud rot, when the mold begins to grow on the inside of the flowers, it actually kills those sugar leaves, which are then like more noticeable from the outside because they're sticking out now. Unfortunately, once you've identified the bud rot, it's likely it's already done significant damage to your crop. When you pair into one of your damaged flowers, like I said, you'll find some gray and brown mold as well as rotten plant material. It just looks off-putting and smells disgusting. Bruh. Once plant tissues come in contact with bud rot, it's most of the time is no longer salvageable. You should always keep a close eye on your flowering plants so that you can catch an outbreak early on. If you were unlucky enough to find some bud rot, carefully remove all the mold and and the damaged plant material. Oftentimes it's heartbreaking and that chore involves dissecting your prized colas, just cutting them up and taking off the rotten pieces. A lot of the times if it's me I just get rid of the entire plant. A good rule of thumb is that if you notice that a bud is over one third infected with bud rot, you should destroy the flower. Once you've removed such a large portion of the bud, there simply isn't enough left to work with. It's also a good idea to consider harvesting early to slow any further damage to your plants. So all that said guys, there are a lot of different reasons why growers will trash their plants. I've trashed a lot of plants in my life, even prized ones that I love that did not make it to harvest. I had to trash them before harvest. It just happens, man. And dealing with diseased plants is one of the toughest parts of being a grower. Nonetheless, each challenge with growing can also be seen as a great learning opportunity if it's viewed in the right perspective. Now, if you had to face the painstaking event of having to destroy your plants, don't worry. Take notes of what went wrong so you don't repeat the problem. The more experience you gain towards growing the plant, the more comfortable you will be when you deal with those issues in the future. Now I know it can sound crazy, trashing your plants, just destroying them, cutting them down, burning them with fire, throwing them in the trash and getting rid of them. A lot of people think of it as super crazy, especially after you put so much passion and energy into growing your crop. For some people it's just literally too much to bear. But you want to be 100% sure that your plants are a lost cause before you decide to chop them down or remove them from your garden. That said, you also want to be super careful to avoid any pathogens or pests or disease to spreading to your other parts of your garden which are not yet inhabited. It's sort of like cutting off a limb to save the body, right? So smash the like button for that weird analogy, which somehow freakishly works. And drop a comment down below and let me know if you've ever had to trash any plants before you got to harvest. And look out for Diesel Dog, guys, because that shit is right around the corner. It's coming soon and it's gonna bang. This video is brought to you by Mars Hydro, where they have a variety of grow lights and grow tents for growers of all experience levels. Whether you're a small home grower or setting up a slightly bigger commercial operation, they have the tents and lights for you. They have tents for every space and need, including the new 2-in-1 tents. And they also have a wide variety of lights to choose from, including full-spectrum LED and the new detachable FCE series. Links to all of the products that we use on this channel, including the Mars Hydro grow lights, are in the description below. Be sure to use the links below to support the ICANN THC channel. You can also save a few bucks on the Mars Hydro website by using the code ICANNTHC at checkout for store-wide savings. Don't forget to use the code and save yourself a few bucks. Now, back to the video. But anyway, smash the like, hit the bell, and we we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, fam. Hey.